So in this video, I'm going to introduce you to four new trigonometric identities. They're called the product sum trig identities. Uh, now, they are very useful. Let's look at the left-hand side of all of them. Four new identities we're looking at, and you can hopefully see how useful they are. So sine angle times sine of a different angle equals and some mysterious identity. Now, we have three other ones here, all in different permutations. And the upshot is that we can now uh, multiply two trig functions using these identities. So here's our first identity, half cos a minus b minus cos a plus b. Now you're not going to have to memorize these, obviously. Here's another one looking very similar, plus instead of minus. And another one, and another one. And there are our four product sum trig identities. Now, where did they come from? It's easy to prove where these uh, come from now. Recall these angle sum and difference identities. We can call this first one equation one, and we can call this next one equation two. Now, what would happen if I were to add these together? Well, I'd get cos A plus B plus cos A minus B. So that's on the uh, left-hand side here. And then on the right-hand side, I have to get cos A cos B plus cos A cos B. That would be two lots of that same term. And then if I were to take this term, negative sine A sine B plus sine A sine B, I'd get zero. Uh, so now I have this thing down the bottom. Now that looks remarkably similar to one of these if I just take that two and move it to the other side and make it look a little more like this. As I did, I moved the two over here to be half, just divided by two. And I've just changed the order of cos A minus B, moved it to here, cos A plus B, and moved it to there. This looks identical to this one here. Cos A cos B equals half cos A minus B plus cos A B, just with the left-hand side and the right-hand side reversed. So we've proved one of them. Uh, it's relatively easy to prove another one of them in almost the same way. So similar that I've copy and pasted and then erased some stuff. And instead of adding the two functions together, I'm going to subtract one function from another. Equations. Subtract one equation from another. I am uh, subtracting equation one from equation two, so I'm sort of subtracting upwards. You might not be used to that, but I can do it. Uh, cos A minus B minus cos A plus B. Now, if I do cos A cos B minus cos A cos B, I'm going to get zero. And then if I do sine A sine B minus minus sine A sine B, I'll get two sine A sine B. Now, if I rearrange that just like I did above, I'm going to have a second identity. Okay, and there we have it, a second identity done. That's the sine A sine B identity done. Two there, and you might be thinking, well, how are you going to prove the other two? Well, I've done it using some product sum identities. Now, how many product sum identities do I have? Well, I've got four of them, and I've used two of them, and I've added and subtracted to get two. So if I took the other two, added and subtracted them, Maybe I'd get something there. Maybe something a little bit like uh, that. Now that is uh, this identity. And of course, maybe something a little bit like... Okay, so uh, they are our product sum trig identities. We can derive them from our angle sum trig identities. Uh, and obviously we can use them for some stuff now. Get asked to express a product as a sum. So you might say uh, 2 sine 3 theta cos theta. Now let's go through our um, trig identities. Uh, sine times a cos. Okay, that's the one we want to use. Sine times a cos. Now there's this 2 out the front here, but we'll deal with that in a second. I suppose by a second I mean right now. So, so we've got 2 here. So I'm just going to write 2 times, and now we do our whole identity. So it's half sine A plus B plus sine A minus B, where the A and B are three theta for A and theta for B. Let's sub it all in. Subbed in there, it's two times all of that. Now the half is being multiplied by all of that. So we can do our two times a half, which is just gonna give us one. So that's gonna sort of go away. And now we have sine 3 theta plus theta, which is sine 4 theta. And then we have plus sine 3 theta minus theta, which is 2 theta. All right, we have done what we were asked to do. We've expressed that product as a sum. Now we could get asked to do this with actual values, whether it's degrees or radians. Now we're just going to use the same formula here. 
sub in 50 and 60 and spit out an answer. To be our answer there, sine 110 plus sine negative 10 degrees. Now just think for a moment, you can sort of make this a little bit neater because sine of negative 10, that's happening in the fourth quadrant, which is going to be a negative sine. So we can instead move that negative 10 into the first quadrant as positive 10 and then give a, a negative sine value there. So it's neater to write this as sine 110 degrees minus sine positive 10 degrees. Now it's worth exploring an example that looks a little bit like this. Uh, now this is a cosine times a cosine, uh, which is going to be our second identity there. I'm just going to sub in my values and then we'll talk after that. Values, I get this big mess here. Uh, and now let's take a look. It's cos pi plus, uh, sorry, cos theta plus pi on 4 minus theta minus uh, pi on 4. Now, what's that going to equal? Well, this 2 times a half, they're going to cancel out each other again. I'm going to end up with cos uh, theta minus theta. The thetas go away. And then I end up with pi on 4 minus minus pi on 4. Pi on 4 plus pi on 4 is pi on 2. And then over here, I end up with cosine theta plus pi on 4 plus theta minus pi on 4. I'm going to have theta plus theta, which is 2 theta. Uh, and the pi on 4 minus pi on 4, they're going to cancel out. So now I have cos pi on 2 plus cos 2 theta. And you might be tempted to stop there, but you know what cos pi on 2 is. It's just 0. So now we're left with cos 2 theta. So a neat way to simplify something that starts off life quite complicated. Like some trig identities are four neat little proofs for where they've come from and then just some ways to use them. But once you've got your trig identities, it's nothing more than substitution and then keeping your wits about you and making sure that you make little simplifications where you can.